The real estate sector is one of the indispensable elements of our lives. Everyone wonders how we can invest. How can we invest better and smarter? We will be in a bit with our expert in the real estate sector. In this interview, we will get answers on how should investments be made and how can we choose our investments without mistakes. PR Prestige Proje Yatırımı ortaklı olarak 17 yılı aşkın süre as Prestige Investment Project Partnership, we've been providing our services in the real estate sector for 17 years. Our work involves mostly developing lands and creating new projects in the real estate sector. In the map behind me, we can see raw lands. We are highly in involved in transferring these pieces of lands from the zoning phase into commercial, industrial and residential lands. Birçok alanda projeleme yapmaktayız. Ee, kazansız yatırım yoktur, yanlış yatırım vardır. Bu bağlamda şu üçlemi her zaman müşterilerimize ve yatırımcılarımıza sunmaktayız. There is no losing investment, but there is a wrong investment. Related to this, we always offer this trade to our customers and investors. The right land, the right time and the right place always result in a successful investment. Kendilerine sormaları gereken üç tane soru var. We also recommend the investors to ask themselves the following three questions before starting off their investment journey. The investment decisions should be shaped based on their answers to these questions. First, are you able to afford a similar real estate with a cheaper price? Using technology nowadays, we can easily answer this question by looking into other options very quickly. Second, Real estate is a currency, just like gold. Accordingly, our second question will be, are you able to transfer your real estate into cash quickly? If yes, then this investment is logical. Our third question frames a very important issue. If you need to exchange your real estate very quickly, are you able to exchange it in the worst case scenario for at least the same price for which you bought it? The real estate for which you are able to positively answer these questions is always a real estate that you can buy and sell. Colloquially, we call it a bargain. It is what equates with a good deal. Alright, now what should we look at in this type of real estate? We need to look again at three features. First, what we can call a real estate should definitely have a road around it. If not, it won't probably be a real estate that you should choose. Second. Signs of civilization will definitely be available around it. Even if you decide to buy a land in the mountains, if there is an established village close to it, we can consider that its community will grow and develop, and will eventually benefit your area. Thirdly, if possible, the chosen real estate should be on a high, slightly inclined area. These real estates will always provide their owners great benefits as long as the right land, the right time and the right place right is taken into consideration. The evaluation of a land starts its journey since being a raw land. For example, it can be evaluated as a land that can be cultivated. In other cases, some lands may be stony on which no work can be done. These raw lands will be shaped eventually according to the situations. We provide our services also for these types of lands, and not just those that are being zoned or used as commercial, industrial or residential areas. In this regard, I want to highlight the food shortage problem that has been worsening over the past 10 years in our country. The growth of cities is an undeniable fact. Both the population and the business areas are growing, and this is leading to less interest in agricultural lands and food production. For this reason, through our services in these areas, we are supporting the protection of agricultural lands. We are now looking at the map of Turkey, and we're going directly into Istanbul, the eye of Turkey. I'll try to present to you the area of interest to us. The point that we are seeing now is our location. This is Başakşehir. It's a city known for its solid ground and in the last few years it has been a satisfying area for both investors and residents. We are now getting closer to the Canal of Istanbul, also known as the New City. 
The colored area that we can see now is the Canal of Istanbul project extending over an area of 453 million square meters. The district of Arnavutköy starts from above. If we can move a bit upwards, the new city starts from here. Here we can see the airports. Arnavutköy starts from right here. From this point, the canal starts and continues over 43 kilometers long along the way. Tayakadın, Bayalık, Baklalı, let's go a bit downwards. Dursunköy, right on the other side we have Çilingir, Sazlıbosna and Hacimaşlı. Right next to Şamlar here we can see the blue area, the water surface, which connects as we move forward to Küçükçekmece. From here, just through the lake of Küçükçekmece, we are connecting the Marmara Sea to the Black Sea. Around 1,600,000 employment opportunities can be created in this area. And our new city is being built directly around it. We can look at the plan of the new city from the official website of Arnavutköy municipality. I want to also point out that Arnavutköy is one of the most important urbanism plans that has been set by the Environment and Urbanism Ministry. Over a longitudinal way of 43 kilometers, our new city will be established. We're talking about a whole travel length here. Just right next to it, Iktelli, a very important industrial area in the European side of Istanbul. Then we have Hadımköy, a new industrial region which we can consider now as the supporting vein of Iktelli. Throughout history, civilizations began around this region. If we look for example at Baharat Yolu and Epek Yolu, these roads were used by traders who have established over time city centers and commercial activities. Based on these civilizations, the city started to take its shape. Accordingly, if we go back to our map, we can see the new city as two cities separated by the canal. On one side we have got the Adak section and the other side we have got the newly forming European side consisting of Hadımköy that we previously mentioned. On both sides we got roads extending from at least 41 square meters in size up to 55 square meters. If we want to put this into context we can compare it to the Aksaray Vatan road which is well known among Istanbul residents as being of 40 square meters so the new roads that we're mentioning are even larger. When we move further we can see that these roads are surrounding the canal from both sides. Three roads are now being built on each side. Look. We can see along the canal that the roads are extending over this side and the other side. This is airport. The roads are still going near the airport as we can see. One more thing that I like to mention, to avoid the problem that we've been encountering around the Bosphorus Canal. Parks have been planted on both sides of the new canal along the 43 kilometers. Among these parks there are only roads but no buildings will be present. So if a person wants to walk around the new canal, they can go walking along the 43 kilometers from the Black Sea to the Marmara Sea without passing by any building. I also want to talk further about the Istanbul airport. It is the pride of Turkey, whether we're talking about the location, the size or the planning form. It is considered as the largest logistic airport in Europe. This logistic area, as it connects internal roads and external roads, will definitely need support from logistic centers that will be founded around it. To achieve this, the port of Haydar Pasha, that we now know as Karaburun, just near the sea upward, will be removed and a customs area will be built up here to assist the transfer of goods by the sea route. This way, the burden on the Ambarla port will be decreased. If we go from here downwards, right beside the airport, as we can see, there is the Kuzey Marmara Highway connecting to the Sultan Selim Bridge. We know this road as the Kuzey Marmara Highway, but its original name is the Transit Road. 
What's the main aim of this transit road? It serves as a traffic lowering channel for goods entering to Istanbul on their ways from Europe, Asia or even the Middle East. Thanks to this road, goods will no longer have to pass through the Fatih Sultan Mehmet Bridge or the Bosporus Bridge, which decreases the traffic inside Istanbul significantly. Based on this, this area will be a very logistic town. Vehicles coming from here carrying raw materials will also be able to pass directly to the newly forming industrial regions Hadımköy and Yasıören that we previously mentioned. The goods will also pass from this transit road if they are being transferred by airway or even by sea route. This shows us that this transit road will be a very logistical network in the heart of the new city.